What is up squeegee slingers and water fed pole wiggling wagglers and welcome back to the Tradman YouTube channel once again. Today we're going to be doing a commercial job. It's called Strathbogie Chainsaws. So they do lawnmowers, chainsaws and all that kind of garden related stuff. We're going to be doing the windows for them today, cleaning the frames, panes and sills. And I'm going to be showing you doing the external of the windows. They're the dirtiest ones to do, obviously. So we've got the insides to do as well. Only difference is we're doing the inside is that I put a towel down on the floor when I'm cleaning the inside. But I thought we'd show you doing the outside because they're the dirtiest and we'll show you how we do them and what I'm using and the methods I'm using to clean the windows. So let's get on with it, shall we? Right then folks, so here we are at the Strathbogie Chainsaws. We're going to be cleaning the frames, panes, sills and doors. And these are the tools I personally use. And I'll explain why I use them as we go along. First of all, we've got a bucket of clean water. There's been nothing added to it. This is an Unger bucket and it does actually come with a lid that is in the van. So if you're going along bumpy roads or traveling a fair distance, you could put a lid on this bucket. I'll put a link in the description below to the tools that I'm talking about today. So we've got the bucket of clean water, nothing added to it. We've got two applicators. These are the main ones I use. So we've got a 14 inch Unger. This is the black edition with the black edition sleeve. I'll put that in the description as well. This is my main applicator that I use. And for smaller windows, we've got the Unger six inch uh, sleeve as well for those little six inch panes and things like that. So that's really good for that. We've got three squeegees, we've got a big, medium and small basically. So that was an 18 inch, you can buy it as 18, but I've cut it down to 16 inches. But you can just obviously have it, leave it at 18 if you prefer. For me, I prefer having it at 16, that works better for me on most of my jobs. So 16, 12 and 6 inch. Now you can't actually buy 6 inch liquidators, you have to cut it down yourself as well. Now it's fairly straightforward to do and I'll leave a link at the top of the video to a video how I made the 6 inch squeegee and you can follow those steps to make any size of squeegee that you need. In the squeegees themselves, this is Unger Green Power Rubber. This is the best rubber I have ever used so I'll leave a link to that as well. And for the frames and the panes of the top sections, we've got this, which is my frame cleaner. Now I'll show you what this is. This is the best thing I've found to use so far for things that you can't reach if you're not on a ladder. This is the Maker Handy Sleeve. And basically it's a very, very sort of sticky Velcro and your microfiber cloths will stick to it quite well like that. And basically that is your frame cleaner. Now I've attached it to a water-fed pole angle adapter and simply put a single screw through here, the existing hole in the handle. I just drilled a little pilot hole, put a screw through, and now it holds onto the water-fed pole angle adapter so I can change the angle of my frame cleaner. I normally like it at a bit almost like a right angle. That works for me, especially if I'm cleaning sills they're up quite high. It's good to be able to adjust the angle of your frame cleaner if you can't get to it with a ladder and you don't have a water fed pole. So that is the frame cleaner and it's on a phantom pole. Really, really like this pole. Great clamps. Phantom poles are really, really good. And for the glass itself, for the glass that I can't reach, I've got a 14 inch accelerator squeegee with the 14 inch flick pad attached. Same green power rubber in there. So for commercial stuff, I tend to use the bigger pole tool. So the 14 inch uh, pole tool. And if it's residential, I'll tend to use the 10 inch channel. So it's a little bit smaller and fits those residential windows a bit better, a bit easier to use. But for commercial large panes of glass, you'll find the 14 inch is ideal. So basically what we're going to do is just step by step show you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So as I normally say, work from outside, inside, and then bottom. So frames, panes, sills. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around all the framework first with our frame cleaner. Now, what I like to do is if you've just changed the cloth that's on your frame cleaner, um, I like to just make it a little bit damp and that tends to clean the frames up quite well. Not completely saturated, just a little bit damp. So what I normally do is I'll just take my applicator, squeeze out the excess, so I'm going to be doing the top sections first here anyway. Okay, 
and then just take your damp applicator and just give it a couple of little wipes like that and that just dampens the cloth down a little bit and just makes the frame cleaning much easier especially if there's any little spider deposits or anything like that having a slightly damp cloth is going to be really good for cleaning up the frames so very simply there's a lot of spider webs here it's a wooden construction on the outside and spiders love wood as i'm sure a lot of you probably know so basically just go over all the frames with your frame cleaner now i obviously i can reach to here and down but i i would struggle to reach up there and rather than try and put a ladder against each little bit it's easier just to use the pole tools and do it this way. So just do everything that you can't reach with the pole and obviously finish off the rest of it by hand, which you can reach. Okay, so I do find that a lot of my commercial jobs tend to really like being done traditionally because they don't like puddles of water outside, especially the doorways, um, particularly in the colder months as well, especially, it becomes a bit of a hazard. So they do like the uh, traditional method. So even if you're mainly water fed, um, having those traditional skills might come in handy for those jobs that do prefer to be cleaned in this way. And obviously if you get the insides to clean it as well, then you'll already be pretty, pretty good at it. Okay, so th this job actually gets done once a month on the outsides and the insides is usually once every three months or so. The insides don't obviously get dirty quite so fast. So the outsides is usually just covered in spider webs the odd bit of bird's mess and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'll cut the footage here because I'm sure you don't want to just watch me wiping frames for the next 10 minutes. So what I'll do is I'll cut the footage here and I'll resume it back when we're actually going to be cleaning the glass. But when you're doing a job like this, just go over all the frames like I'm doing now. Give it all a good wipe down and it takes off all that dust and spider webs and all that kind of stuff. Okay, right, let's get on with the glass, shall we? Right then guys, so that is all the frames clean. So I've used the pole tool for the tops and then a microfiber slightly damp for everything lower level that I can reach by hand. The framework's all been wiped. So little spider deposits, spider webs, anything like that has all been removed. So the frames are all nice and clean. So now I know it's the glass and sills to do next. Now I've got a bee flying around me, hello. Um, Okay, so <laughs> after that small distraction, um, so the cloths I'm using is the Unger uh, mi microfiber sill cloths. I'll leave a link to them as well. They're nice and compact, small size, and they hold plenty of water as well before you need to change them. So I'll just put that back in my pouch. This is the Unger uh, twin compartment pouch. So I've got my front compartment with clean cloths and then the other one with slightly damp and used cloths and uh, also a sill squeegee as well so any excess water when i finish squeegeeing down i'll use this to pull the excess water off and then use my cloth to wipe the sills up so what i'm going to do is go around all the bits of glass i can't reach with the 14 inch accelerator squeegee so dunk that in the clean water like i say stress there's nothing in it that's any sort of obviously a little bit of frothy water you can see is just excess soap from the applicator so i've not actually added anything to the water so now that that's saturated just give it a little bit of a shake now because these are quite large windows you do need your applicators fairly saturated especially if it's quite warm you kind of really need them as wet as possible but what i'm going to do now is the crucial bit that's going to make this tool and any other tool work very very well which is to use some dish soap directly onto the applicator. So this one is just fairy liquid, the original one. So I'm gonna put a line of that on there, just like that, and that is what you need. Okay, so now well, we're gonna go over to the glass. Now I could just about reach the top of these if I went onto my tiptoes, but you know, why make life difficult when I've got an extension pole? So what I'm gonna do is do everything that I can't reach and bring it down to a workable height. So around about head height, and then use my hand tools to do the bottom bit. So normally what I do is actually just go and do the whole bank of windows, all the tops, and then I can put the pole down and use my hand tools rather than switching from pole tool to hand tool and keep doing that. Just stick with the tool you're using when you're finished with it and then switch down to the hand tools afterwards. Okay, so there we go. All right, and sometimes 
this is what I like about traditional is that you're cleaning it and it's left nice and dry and I can see instantly if there's anything that I've missed and for instance there's a bit of spider webs right here that's really stuck onto the glass and if I was using my water fed pole the I wouldn't have saw that because the glass would be wet then I would drive off and then when it dries the customer would see these bits of spider webs and debris stuck to it uh, once it had dried so now what I can do obviously is just soap it up again like that and that just gets rid of those spider webs they're quite clingy it just sometimes just takes a couple of goes to get rid of them and there we go now it's perfect now there's nothing nothing on it so I'm happy with that and I can move on to the next one now obviously doing things traditionally does take a little bit longer usually um, especially if you're obviously taking your time trying to be um, you know as good as you possibly can get the quality as good as you possibly can um, without rushing it so obviously you have to price it accordingly so there we go it's looking really good so this will normally last for about maybe five six windows before i will re-dunk the applicator into the bucket add soap again and then carry on so what i normally do is i'll try and explain what i'm doing as i'm doing it is when i'm coming up to the top of the frame if you want to get as close as possible without touching the top of the frame if you do it this way because the top of the applicator is quite fluffy there is a danger that you could touch i would say danger <laughs> there's a chance of touching the top of the frame with your fluffy applicator and then you get runs come down off the frame you've got to dry the frame and it's a bit of a pain in the bum but if you use the edge of the flick pad to do the top you can see it's not quite so fluffy so there's a lot less chance of getting any solution on the top of the frame so when i'm doing the tops i usually do it like this come along the top like that and I get a nice crisp line along the top without touching the frames and then turn it horizontally and keep scrubbing like that so along the top down along the top down like that okay and then flick your flick pad back choose which corner you cut into so cutting in just means like this so pulling the squeegee along the top into the corner down back up Across, get the other corner down and you want to be turning as you're coming across the glass so see how I'm turning as it comes to hit that side so come across start turning get to that side of the frame start turning come across that side of the frame and that way you don't get turn marks if you turn on the spot without any movement if you're not actually moving physically across the glass and you turn the squeegee you'll get turn marks so try and turn while while you're actually moving the squeegee across the window and as you're using it the um, solution will start to really thicken up and it will get to a point where it starts getting hard to sort of soap up the window um, it will become too thick the, so the solution will become too thick um, and you'll need to reapply water to it so already I can tell by the fourth window that it's starting to get that way um, but I know I can get away with maybe another couple of windows before I have to saturate the applicator again. Okay, so I'm just taking my time as I go along doing this to try and explain to you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And hopefully this helps, especially you new folks that are getting into window cleaning. And if you've got any questions, just pop them in the comments box below and I'll happily do my best to answer them. Okay. Again, so onto the glass, turn it onto its side, do the top, pull down, give it a good scrub, flick it back, cut into a corner like that, pull down, cut over to the other top corner, pull down, turn as I'm moving, turn as I'm moving, like that. Okay, I'll probably get away with doing these two before I have to saturate the applicator again that's it now if there's anything in particular you would like a video done on then feel free to let me know i'm just doing a slightly different kinds of videos now with no music and just explaining what i'm doing why i'm doing it because that seems to be quite uh, helpful to most of you rather than uh, what used to be the most common thing, which was watching people clean windows to music. 
and not really explaining what they're doing and why they're doing it. So, right, so there we go. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the tops done. So that means obviously I could get those. Uh, how many have we got? Four, five, six, seven, eight as well. Yeah, so I'll get, I'll get that next eight done with the pull tool and then I can use my hand tools. Obviously when I'm not filming, I do this a lot, lot quicker, but there's no point in me doing that and uh, while trying to explain what I'm doing. Okay. Now these ones I can pretty much reach actually, to be honest, because um, the slope is coming uphill, but as soon as I've got the pole tool, I'll just use it. Across to that one. Now the great thing about this tool is if you've not seen it before, is that it's called a zero detailing, basically precision tool. So essentially what it's doing is putting more pressure on the ends of the rubber because of the blue clips on the end are angled down towards the end of the rubber. So I'm not having to actually detail the glass. I just have to wipe up the frames if there's any solution on the frames. But as you can see, there isn't really much to wipe, just a few bubbles there, but by the time I've got to the end, that's probably gonna have evaporated and dried, so I don't have to waste time wiping glass, which is well, probably about 25% of your day if you're traditional, is uh, detailing. So imagine cutting all of that out completely, detailing the glass if you don't have to, but to get that, you have to use the right solution which is what I've shown you, which is a bucket of water, soap on the applicator, and uh, then it'll work perfectly fine. Oh, and a good squeegee rubber as well. So, I mean, honestly, the best one I would recommend to you is the Unger Power Rubber. Um, for many, many years, it used to be Etere Master Rubber. I love that stuff. Um, but the Unger stuff has, has beat in it, to be honest. Um, the glide is better. The durability is better. Um, and the only downside to Unger green rubber, I would say, which is pretty much the same for every rubber, to be honest, um, is once you get into kind of really quite high temperatures, um, sort of you're coming up to like 30 degrees Celsius and above, it does start to struggle. It starts to get really sticky on the glass. But to be honest, most squeegee rubbers do that anyway. Um, it's very, very, unless it's a very highly saturated window, then it will start to squeak on the window in high temperatures. But uh, most of the time, if it's below 30 degrees Celsius, then uh, the rubber performs fantastically on most windows. There we go. So there are my two pole tools ready to go around the corner. I don't actually think I need them around the corner. The glass is reachable around there. So I just need my hand tools. So that's all the tops basically done. So I know my frames are done. The uh, tops of the glass is all done. Um, so I can just use my hand tools, take the bucket with me as I go, and I know it's all come, everything behind me then is completed. Right, so to carry my tools, I've got a bucket on a belt. Now, due to a, an old spine injury, which I got from using very, very high, heavy water-fed poles, um, I've had to lighten my trad belt at the moment because I'm getting some back pain, which is really annoying because um, I've been doing a lot of water-fed pole work, high-level work again. I've been naughty and been doing high-level work again, and that's aggravated my back. So I've had to lighten my trad belt a little bit to try and help with that. I'm just getting old and broken, guys. That's what it is, old and broken. So if any of you got any millions that you want to share, pass on, then happy days, let me know. So my 16 inch, 12 inch are in the Samurai Bucket on a Belt version two, which has a rubber partition in the middle, which protects the edge of my squeegee blades. So I don't get any, any nicks, but it's quite an expensive bucket on a belt and I had to import it from Australia. So it was quite expensive. But so far I've had it for mm, maybe seven or eight months or something, I don't know. Uh, and so far it's been all right, so happy days. Right, same thing again, take the applicator hand tool, dunk it in your clean water. Then take your uh, bottle of soap. I just actually leave mine in the bucket now because it's weight saving. I used to carry it in my pouch, but uh, just for weight saving, I now leave it in the bucket. Pop your soap on the applicator like so, a line on each side will be fine. There we go. And that'll make a really nice solution for us to work with. And you'll see there'll be very little to no squeaking on the glass. 
using this. So rub it in. That's the first thing you've got to do. When you've got soap on the applicator, you have to rub it into the glass. So it takes a few seconds just to rub that in and you'll see the solution start to thicken up. See how it's not moving anymore. So if I compare that to say this, if I haven't rubbed it in, see how runny it is. So you can see that on the camera, it's just flooding down the glass as opposed to the one I have rubbed in, which is staying on the glass. So it just takes a few seconds to rub that in and then you'll get really good solution for your squeegee, whatever squeegee you're using. Okay, so taking our 16 inch squeegee, what I like to do is, and what I would recommend you guys do as a habit, before you put it on the glass, is to prime your squeegee. So basically get it wet and soapy, ready to squeegee the glass. So you can either do that by simply putting your squeegee on the glass, giving it a little rub like that, and then go. Or you can, when you take your applicator out, is to rub your squeegee on the applicator before you start. That's the main one I normally do. So I, I work two-handed. I've got my applicator in the left, squeegee in the right, and I will wipe the squeegee on the applicator so then that's all wet and soapy ready to go, especially if I've had it in the bucket on the belt and the squeegee is dry. Um, the squeegee does not like to be dry. So make sure it's all um, wet and ready to go. And simply just start squeegeeing the window. So these ones have flat laying seals. So I just have to be a little bit more precise on the edges to make sure I get that zero detailing. But you can see if I bring the camera in, the solution is just on the frame and not on the glass. So that is saving me a lot of work. I can just squeegee it in pain. Now, because this frame is actually angled away from me with a rubber seal on the edge, I can close out to the side. So normally the rule of thumb is if it doesn't have a seal on the edge, then close out to the bottom if it's easier to do. But because obviously the bottom here uh, is right on the floor and I've got a concrete base underneath it, I would have to adjust the angle of my hand tool to be able to close out to the bottom. So you can see at the moment, to be able to close out, it's just a little bit tricky because the hand tool gets kind of obviously caught on the floor and I'd have to really kind of tilt up like that to try and get it to close out. But with this tool, you could, as one option, put it into minus five and that brings the blade back on itself towards you and that way it's a lot easier to close out but that means you would have to use that angle for most of the window or be prepared to change the angle before you get to the bottom. But an easier way to do it, especially if it's got a seal on the side, you can get away with this and it still leaves zero detailing, is to close off to the side like that and then pull the solution off the frame and then it leaves nothing behind either. So that's another option for you. But if it hasn't got a seal on the side, you are better to close out to the bottom if you're aiming for zero detailing around the window. If you're not too bothered about having to detail the glass, then it doesn't really matter where you close out then. But for me, I'm aiming to not have to detail the glass at all, because that saves me a lot of time. Okay. So again, obviously we've done that top section with the pole tool, so I'm just doing what I can reach at head height. So what I normally do is kind of put it somewhere in the middle of the glass, cut over to one side. You can either cut over there or you can cut over here. It doesn't really matter, but stick it somewhere in the middle of the solution. Come over the top of the solution and down, over the top of the solution and down, like that. The way I got told it was called was over the mountain squeegeeing. So you're climbing over the mountain. So you're going up and over the mountain, down the mountain, up and over the mountain, and down the mountain. That's kind of what I got taught a long time ago. And then here comes the close out. So I could actually close out to the bottom, see? So it just gets a bit tricky because my hand's near the bottom of the floor. So that means I have to tilt my wrist and my arm up to be able to close out. So it's possible. It's not that it's not doable, but I just find it's more comfortable to close out to the side, pull the solution off, um, and then I don't have to adjust any angles really at all of my wrist or the tool. Okay, hopefully this is making sense for you. Sometimes it's not so easy to explain over camera. Okay, so again, wipe the squeegee over the top, over the top, and just continue down the pane. Now there is another way to do these windows as well. This is one way to do it, which is the normal way. It's called fanning the window. There we go, see? did work. 
and did you get clean clothes out? So it's good to try different things just to see if it works. But uh, just on these particular ones, closing out to the side seems to just be a little bit easier. Right, now what I'm going to do is show you a different way to do these windows. And you will need a squeegee that is at least over half the width of the window for this to work at its best. So I'm gonna soap up this pane. Okay, so our squeegee is just about half. So I will, I will get away with it just. It should really be about there. I'd probably be better than 18 inch, but hey ho, I must have left that in the workshop. <laughs> right, so over the top. Okay, that's the start over the top comes straight down the pane right to the bottom okay round you're going to come back up over the top and then this is our bit of solution here we're going to just come round here and cut straight down okay so that's another way to do it okay so what I normally do is I'll do all my clean up at the bottom of the sills at the end and that gives it some time to dry as well. Okay, so again, I just dunk my applicator in the water, give it some soap, and it's as quick as that. Okay, this one is a little bit of a squeeze in here, but fortunately I'm quite thin. Going up and down ladders keeps you fit, you know, guys. All right, got some bird's mess on there, but this applicator makes short work of it, no problem. I'm quite impressed with this black edition sleeve. It's very good, good scrubbing power, holds on to the solution very well. Can't complain. I wish it they'd put two scrubbers though, like the Ninja sleeve. It'd be handy if it had two scrubbers, one on each end. But that would be my only complaint. Right, so in this instance, it'd be easier for me to use my left hand. So try and practice with right and left hand. And in this instance, using my left hand to squeegee helps a lot. Same with using a pole tool. If you, if you can learn to use the pole alternate, which hand your sort of dominant hands at the bottom of the pole, and um, swap that around, it's better for your body as well. And uh, good for those tricky windows, it would be better to have the pole on your left side as opposed to your right, if you're right-handed. But yeah, practice using the squeegee in your left as well. So when you're doing windows like this, where you're tucked behind things, it's just, it would be very difficult for me to use my right hand. It's kind of coming across my body because the window's on my left. So it's easier to switch to my left hand and use that instead. So get, get good at using both of your hands for uh, your window cleaning. Close out and pull the solution off, like that. Now, I did actually try um, water-fed poling this place before, but the problem I was finding was even with a really good brush, um, or a really good quality brush, high-end with natural bristles as well, um, that it was not always taking off all the spider webs. Um, when it dried and I came back out and had a look at it, um, from doing the insides, there were still spider webs left, which I didn't know about because when it was wet it looked absolutely brand new it looked fantastic um, but when it dried i saw there were still spider webs left attached to the frame that hadn't come off um, so that just kind of made me more aware of okay well sometimes it does look great when it's wet but it doesn't always dry as good as you think sometimes so 
for me you just kind of think well if i can traditionally do it and it's easy enough to do and i get perfect results every time i can look at it when i'm finished and uh, it's it's you know guaranteed good quality as opposed to hoping it's good quality unless the customer phones you i, I don't like that aspect of water fed pole you know waiting for a customer to let you know if your work's good or not i like to know it's good before i um drive away you know but obviously some things are not practical to do um traditionally so you've got to be willing to do both and some people aren't very good at traditional there's that to it as well and i know there's a lot of water fed pole guys um that uh, don't like trad because they can't trad um, they don't do it often enough to get good at it so they don't can make a good hourly rate when they do come to do it so for them it's no use um, you don't get good at it unless you practice and there's a lot more skill element to traditional than there is with the water fed pole so to get quick at it and good at it and good hourly rate with it you've got to practice um, it's such a handy skill to have because if you get asked to do insides at least you will be able to do those interior windows really easily and quickly and you won't have to worry how you're going to do it see now cleaning this and i can see after i've cleaned it well that's a scratch there. there's nothing i can do but here there's spider droppings on here so that's good i can i've just cleaned it and it's still there so i can give it another scrub and then squeegee it again And now I know it's 100% clean. Now I'm going to try that other technique again that I showed you, which is sort of, I don't know, I don't know what to call it. It's an up, up, down, round, I don't know. <laughs> but here we go anyway. So cut in. You can actually cut in down the bottom as well, which I'll show you in another window. So come all the way down and back up over the top of it, down. And then there's our solution there we're going to come around and then come straight down at an angle so the water's running up the squeegee and not towards our clean glass and that's another way you can you can do it just um, rewind the video on that technique and then try and practice it yourself get out there and have a go at it, it takes a little bit of practice to do that one to get it right so the other way you can do it is cutting down the bottom of it I usually go over the top, but you can do it this way as well. So you can either cut in like this and pull up the way, or you can cut down like that around and pull it up like that. And then do it like that, you know, and then close out. That's another way you can do it. But personally, I, I like the over the top, the other one that I used. You'll find your preference, what you prefer to do. And it depends on the window as well. Um, if it's got rubber seals that are quite abrasive, sometimes coming up the rubber just doesn't work very well at all. You get too much friction. It's easier to come down the rubber when you've got abrasive seals than kind of going against it. So on this particular window, because it's got rubber seals on the sides, it's easier to go essentially with gravity and with the rubber and go down the window. Okay, so again, so what I like to do as well is um, part of, well, priming, but also cleaning your squeegee blade as you're working, your squeegee blade will start to pick up little bits of debris, is just to use, well, I like to use the underside of my applicator. If I see anything on my squeegee, I'll wipe it off on the bottom of my applicator because that bit is not going on the glass. That bit there doesn't ever really make contact with the glass. So I just use that to get rid of bits on my squeegee like that wipe it off and then you're not going to be left with any lines on the glass. Okay. So fanning. I know these wind, um, videos are a wee bit longer, but hopefully they'll help you, especially if you're brand new to window cleaning. This is the kind of thing sometimes you just need to see and then you're like, oh, okay, I get that now. Now, in about almost a week's time is going to be the Stone Lee show down in England. So um, I'm going to be there um, along with Squeaky Clean Dave and uh, come and say hello to us if you see us. That'd be really nice. Get to meet 
you guys that often watch the videos. It's always good to meet you. And if you buy me a whiskey, I'll be even happier. <laughs> so that's the deal. If you ask me any questions, you get the answer once I've had a whiskey. How's that sound? Now, normally I can actually get, well, all these windows plus the ones, there's ones around the side, which I won't bother filming because they're um, basically kind of similar to this, but just smaller. But I thought I'd just show you this few here to show you what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, normally this job kind of takes, well, I don't know, maybe 35, 40 minutes, something like that. And with the windows around the side as well. It doesn't take very long at all. Um, uh, but I've obviously been doing traditional for a long time to the point where I could do it in my sleep. So um, that's how much practice you need to put in to be able to get a good hourly rate. Doing traditional window cleaning is to get good at it. You will never get a good pay from being a traditional window cleaner if you're not very good, if your technique is poor. And also I would recommend using tools that cut down your workload and that will also give you an extra 25% roughly more work done per day because you're not having to go and wipe every single pane of glass. So, unfortunately, there's actually only one company at the moment that has made a zero detailing tool, uh, which is this one. Uh, most other companies are making standard squeegees, which is a bit disappointing. Um, you know, fine for their day, but I mean, you know, we're in a day and age now where you know, we really should be uh, focusing on cutting the time down for users and their work. And uh, that Mormon tool certainly does that, but nobody else seems to have really caught on yet. I think there was one other aluminium channel that had a go at it, the Legend channel, which I tried. It was okay, but because it was metal, especially if you're working on this, the metal would sometimes scrape against the metal here, and it was horrendous. And you were always worried that you were damaging people's frames, whereas this squeegee's got plastic clips, so it protects your customer's frames. Um, you don't get that horrible noise down the side of the uh, frame as you would with a metal channel. So uh, if other companies could start thinking about making precision tools, um, obviously modifying their current existing products to be able to zero detail, um, it would just make our work so much easier, uh, especially for high level work with pole work and not having to put cloths on poles and wipe glass, or try and wipe glass clean and potentially leaving smear marks everywhere. Um, yeah, get those precision tools on the go, folks. There we go. And stuff like this, like see down here, you obviously get a lot of the um, sort of dirt from the, the, the ground and wind and all that kind of stuff. With the, with the water fed, I found that this dirt here was all still there. Even though I brushed it and rinsed it, um, when it dried, it was still there. But if I use a, a damp microfiber and just wipe it like that, I'm actually removing it and it just comes up. I know it's 100% it's when I leave, you know? But uh, each to their own. I'm just explaining to you why I do things the way I do them. So. You can obviously choose if you want to do it that way or not. For me, it's not just about speed. I mean, I obviously price things accordingly anyway. Um, but uh, it's not just about speed for me, it's quality. I want to have a reputation for being the best um, when it comes to quality. You know, there's plenty of companies out there that are known for being splash and dash, and I do not want to be one of them. Um, and I have built over the last, well, six, seven years that I've been self-employed, um, I have built up that rep reputation. Um, I'm not the cheapest by far, I'm probably one of the most expensive, but people know me for being one of the best quality. So when they want something done perfect, they, they phone me. So if they've got buildings they need selt, hard water stains removed, paint removed, concrete removed, whatever. Um, a lot of them say, well, you're the only one that can do it, because a lot of them don't offer. 
they'll phone around other companies and companies go, nope, we don't do that. So, find your market, guys. I'd rather do less jobs per day, but charge a higher rate than get through the jobs, loads of jobs, which people seem to boast about, especially on Facebook and forums and all that rubbish. Um, I can get through 20, 30, 40 houses a day and all that silly stuff. I would rather do, for the same money, 12 houses or less. Six houses, seven houses. But because I'm there, maybe removing hard water stains or paint or whatever, doing it traditionally by hand, and I charge more, then I don't need to do so many houses per day. And I'm coming away with the same money, if not more, than some of these guys that are going on about doing 40 houses a day and all that kind of stuff. And it's not good for the customer either. They're paying out of their pocket, you know, for a good job and the uh, window cleaner's gone in five minutes, you know? Sack that, I wouldn't be happy with that. If somebody came to wash my car and was gone in five minutes, I wouldn't be chuffed. No matter how cheap they were. But hey, everyone's got their point of view and that's mine. For me, I charge a premium price, but I give them premium quality and I take my time, do it properly. Okay guys, so that is those windows all completed. Um, like I say, I've just taken my time today explaining to you what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. But at least now, I know it's perfect. I haven't packed up yet, I haven't driven away, but I can look at the glass, inspect it, nothing on it, absolutely perfectly clean. I haven't had to wipe any of the edges. And here's an example, here's one that's already dried. See, there's absolutely nothing on the edges anywhere on the glass. Absolutely perfect. So how much time do you think I've saved not having to grab a one of these, smooth microfiber cloth and wipe every single edge for every single window. How much time do you think I've saved? Five minutes? Ten minutes? Well, that's time saved, eh? So anyway, practice with those precision tools. Those are the methods to use. Clean bucket of water, soap on the applicator, rub it in for a few seconds, make sure that solution is all rubbed into the glass nicely to give you that nice frothy effect. Your squeegee will glide beautifully. You won't get any squeaking. Well, unless you use the Mormon rubber. In that case, get some earplugs, because uh, that stuff does. Uh, and you'll have beautiful gliding squeegees, no matter what tool you use. But I would say once you've practiced with regular tools, you're using your standard tools, I would then progress on to using precision tools, which give you more options and zero detailing on the glass. But hopefully that helps you. Any questions, hopefully that's covered quite a lot today. I know it's a longer video, but hopefully that has covered everything you kind of need to know to get you going with window cleaning. And perhaps in the next video, we'll talk about doing higher level stuff with the ladders because we've got two window cleaning professional ladders there. So we might go into a bit more about doing high level work. But for now, that is the basic techniques. We're using pole tools and hand tools. Okay, you take care, be good, and bye for now.